Martha Russell with MediaX at Stanford University, and I'm happy to share with you some early results and some perspectives from Innovation Ecosystems Network, uh, working with my collaborators, Yuka Hutamaki at Tampere Technical University, and Dr. Neil Rubens at the University of Electrocommunications in Tokyo. I'm going to share some ideas with you about innovation ecosystems, about the importance of network orchestration for startups, for growth, and for globalization. There's a sea change in global innovation. From every corner, uh, a mandate for increasing creativity and innovation. And we're hearing this in business, we're hearing this in education, we're hearing this in commerce. MediaX addresses these at the intersection of human sciences and information communication technologies. And from our um, research that takes place around the world, with partners around the world, we're looking at the stakeholders in innovation ecosystems. Regardless of where innovation is happening, there are no critical stakeholders that need to be in place for innovation to take root, for the soil to be fertile, for new questions, for new ideas to grow into successful companies. It involves the service organizations, the legal firms, the accounting firms that help them. It involves the industry associations that help to encourage standardization of new ideas. The banks and financial institutions. The universities are a part of this. The angels and the venture firms that are investors. The startups, of course, and government organizations and policies that are enabling. There was a time when we focused on innovation taking place in clusters and an industry cluster might develop in a region, in a city, in a country. The globalization of business relationships has in many ways changed the necessity of partners being adjacent to each other, physically adjacent to each other. And we find that what used to be the concepts of a cluster requiring physical geographical proximity have now given way to an understanding that it is the relationship distance or proximity that really can enable uh, globalization of companies. On the left you see the way that we used to think about organizational infrastructures. This looks familiar to many of you. On the right, I'd like for you to think about this as the new infrastructure for organizations in which relationships that are inside as well as outside an organization, relationships that are with collaborators as well as competitors, and relationships that reach out to first uh, level customers as well as ultimate end users are all a part of the ecosystem that's important to understand for a business as a startup to grow, become successful, become globalized, and to return the benefit of those investments back home to its investors, uh, to the government organizations that have supported it, and um, to the people who have founded it. We look at this now as a co-creation infrastructure. And we're looking at relationships as the conduits for talent, for information and for financial resources that make the new companies grow. Uh, we look at this in a network sense and you can see a color coding in this illustration that you'll see in some of the early results that I'm going to show you. We show the individuals the, uh, in blue, we show the companies in red, and we show the investors in green. And the connections between them are relationships. And it is a relationship-based infrastructure to innovation that I'd like to share with you. This illustration shows the digital media business uh, businesses in Paris. Um, it is essentially the innovation ecosystem of digital media in Paris. And you see several clusters here uh, that have different patterns. You see in the lower left, you see um, organizations that are linked internationally. In the upper uh, area of the image, you see the uh, Parisian companies that have investment. They've had one or two rounds of investment. And those investors, if they are uh, French, are shown in green, dark green. If they are international, are shown in light green. 
you see the individuals who have helped to found them, and you see some of their branch offices. Now, over on the right, you see a cluster of companies uh, that uh, have branch offices, and in many cases, those branch offices are the offices in Paris. Sometimes it's the uh, headquarters that's in Paris and the branch offices that are elsewhere. But you see that some of them have some funding, but not all of them do. Um, they're largely self-financed. In the center, you see another pattern, and these are um, companies that are really into them in and of themselves. These are companies that are probably lifestyle businesses. They don't have declared investment from other organizations. They don't have branch offices, and uh, they don't have announced alliances and, and uh, with other organizations. So looking at opportunities for change and how organizations can facilitate, we can identify opportunities for each one of these sectors. And probably they should be different opportunities because the character of the co-creation relationships is different in each of these. For example, in the first zone, we can see that a change organization might pull in investors that are not yet a part of their network and get them involved, uh, introducing them to companies and uh, making them part of the community. In the second zone, we can see that those, these organizations are not yet connected with investors and might like to be. That's a way that they can get involved. In the third zone, there's an international community that's already established, and these as resources can be made available to the local French organizations. The fourth zone, we might leave alone. As lifestyle businesses, they probably don't want intervention and are happy the way they are. Now, this as an illustration of the digital media ecosystem in uh, Paris and in France, we can put into a larger context. Let's zoom out a ways and say we're looking at the European Union's ICT, IET ICT Labs program and saying, okay, Paris is a node, uh, one of the six nodes in that program. The other nodes being Stockholm, Berlin, Eindhoven, Helsinki, and Trento. Here you see the red the, are the companies. You see that the green are the investors, and you see the links, the lines between the individuals and the companies, between the companies and the investors, um, are part of the fabric of relationships that are available in this innovation ecosystem for co-creation of value. It's interesting to note uh, that at the center, the fabric that of relationships that links many of the nodes is in fact the green the investors that provide that linkage. And uh, if we look specifically at some of the companies that have a very high betweenness values, uh, it's a network metric that means the number of linkages that are established through that organization, we see that Looklet, Let's Buy It, uh, Vente Prive, Gitsi, NetVibes are all very highly connected. Now these have commercial um, objectives and draw in a lot of partners. Uh, in the process of providing their services. We can look at some of the people who are founders on the board members, um, executives in the companies, and identify uh, some of the individuals. They come from several different countries who have high betweenness value. We can look at some of the financing firms, and these are some of the green entities that you see at the center of this network. Index Ventures, Intel Capital, Atomica, Excel Partners, they're a MediaX member, Sofinova and others uh, that are providing the uh, investment and the relationships uh, between organizations. And we can look at some of the educational institutions to which individuals that are part of this network have alumni affiliation. INSEAD figures very highly, Stanford figures very highly, Harvard, uh, Alto University, UC Berkeley, high betweenness values. They have high relationship capital in this innovation ecosystem. Now, one of the things we might ask is, what would happen if you added another node? That node could be Tokyo. That node could be Brazil. That node could be from Israel. If we added Israel as another node in this cluster, we would see that Israel has significant resources to offer both in terms of the companies in the ICT sector, the individuals that are involved in, in establishing them, the leadership personnel, 
but in the investment as well. And we can see that in this cluster, as perhaps a seventh node, Israel would have the third highest between the centrality value. We see also that some of the um, companies that are represented in EFI 2012 are shown here on the map. And um, the uh, significance of the resources that could be brought to bear are substantial. We can say, what if you added the Bay Area, for example, as another cluster? And what we see is that the resources of Palo Alto, of uh, Silicon Valley, of San Francisco, of San Jose uh, would be an incredible resource. I can't help but noticing, and I know you can too, the green hue that surrounds the left-hand side of this um, cluster that comes to the center. And this, of course, indicates investment, um, venture capital, financing organizations. So looking at um, the opportunities that these companies, the individuals, the investment organizations that are part of the growth uh, ecosystem, you have to ask, well, what's the startup situation like? And in a similar way, we show the startup activities um, in Israel in the ICT sector. And here you see the green lines showing the flow of investment from blue, who are angels in this map, to red, the companies, and the significant activity of half a dozen um, major angels who are investing in Israeli companies in the ICT sector. You also see that um, the educational institutions are important as linking agents um, in the relationship capital. You see that the um, startups and the angels, the educational institutions, uh, show a vibrant and dynamic uh, innovation ecosystem. Strongly represented are new companies in mobile, in social media, in games, in business-to-business -business services, in software, um, and in consulting. And what is also interesting to see if we go, if we extend these networks and say, well, who are these individuals? Who are these people, these companies connected to? A very strong set of linkages with London, with New York, and of course with the Bay Area. How does innovation happen? And how do people who are making individual decisions independently end up in the same future. I believe that events and their impact play an important role, but also the shared vision, the new coalitions, the new relationships that are established pay, play a critical role in establishing a, a vision of the future that is shared. The shared vision becomes transformational in allowing people who are making those individual decisions independently to end up in the, same, in the same future. And so as entrepreneurs in startup activities are working fast to make their, I, turn their ideas into reality, there are a couple of rules that um, are known in Silicon Valley that I'd like to share with you. Five rules for startups in agile ecosystems. The first one is be ready for feedback all the time. Uh, this is called by some people failing forward. In other words, find the critical aspect of what you're doing. Test it and test it so that you can quickly find out uh, if it's going to work or not. If it's not, use that feedback immediately and change something about what you're doing in order to learn from that feedback and let that failure propel you toward success. The second is take responsibility. You can't blame anyone. Not if you expect to get a second chance, but if you take the responsibility and if you share what you have learned with other people, the opportunities are for trying again and getting backing for the next, uh, for the next idea are very high. Each thing that doesn't work includes in it some ideas for what will work. And identifying those and sharing them is one of the keys for the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance, and more after that. The fourth is to start again immediately. 
It's like the, in a football analogy, the quarterback who throws a pass that is not successful, who gets back in formation and again throws another pass right away. And the fifth is don't do it alone. Know and cultivate and orchestrate your network. So those are the five rules for startups in an agile ecosystem. I'd like to share two rules for creating innovation teams. Creativity and innovation really requires a small group to get going. And the rule is that you, when you're building teams for uh, innovation and creativity, it shouldn't be any larger than a team that can have a meal on two pizzas. That's the two pizza rule. When a team gets larger than a group that can have a meal on two pizzas, uh, it's an invitation for bureaucracy. And that may slow your progress. The opportunities are vast. Innovation stakeholders are global. The future scenarios are likely to include personalized data that has social intelligence and context built into it. I like to include exponential augmentation of human capabilities. A culture of risk and failure are essential for innovation. Network orchestration is a key management skill. With shared vision, the transformations can be accelerated. Network orchestration is, I believe, the management skill for the 21st century. And that brings me to the second of the innovation rules, which is the jazz band rule. Putting together a team for innovation and creativity is like putting together a jazz band. Each person is a specialist in what they do. Together they can do something that any of the individuals could not do alone. They are making music together that none of them could do individually. But that music depends on the strength and the expert skill of each of the individuals. And one of the things that is critical in a jazz band is that in addition to playing, you have to listen to the other people. And that's important for an innovation team. That's important for working together and for the kind of collaboration that we build at MediaX at Stanford University. And I would leave you with this question. What is it that we can do together that neither of us could do alone.